Hello there. I just got done uh, diverting power to the botanical gardens. So that means Edgewater is kind of like screwed over. But I had to do it. I mean, like, how else is anything going to change unless something drastic is done? These guys were going to be content in just letting uh, <laughs> Spacer's Choice just run roughshod over them. Either way, I got my power converter. I'm on my way back. What else, man? What else? All right. Uh, as usual, uh, if you like what I'm doing, just hit that like button. Sends out a lot of positive energy into the world, and especially to me. Thank you very much. And if you like what I'm also doing, uh, just go ahead and hit that subscribe button. Uh, check out some of my other things. You guys, thank you very much. I can't stop thinking on Edgewater, Captain. I'm glad the deserters are going to be all right now they got power, but what about the town? All those people. You mentioned something earlier that I wanted to speak to you about. In the bar? When I asked if you were a drinker? Yeah. You sounded worried. Sorry. I know it's none of my business. I'd like a drink now or then. It's not like I think it a failing, mind. It's just I... I live right across the road. Most nights I watch folks out my window. When they come in here, they might be happy or sad. Mostly they're tired. When they leave, they're mad at themselves. Or they stumble into the alley and I listen to their hearts breaking. Jeez. Sounds like folk here live hard lives. Maybe so. But we don't think on it that way. Get the power regular and dip out. See where we're going. We're gonna take that thing. Okay, going quiet. Everybody in the town's gonna hate me. If you do nothing, nothing's gonna change. Forcing people back into that town is just gonna make them miserable again. Ooh, hello. Oh, hell no. <laughs> the force is too big. Evicted. Jeez. Oh yeah, I made it. I made the right decision. Okay, let's find this. Uh thing and get the hell out. I'm not trying to stick around this town for too long.
You want to know what gets my bile churning? Edgewater has suffered a cavalcade of disasters, plague, marauders, desertion. Then you wandered in town. And I was so damn sure our luck was starting to turn. I never knew how right I was. Just answer one question for me. Why'd you do it? It's not personal. I need your pass. To teach you a lesson. Is that right? I'm dying to hear this. Please, educate me. You're all slaves to the spacious choice. I'm liberating you. Liberating? Edgewater is my home. The only home I've ever had. I put down roots here, gave decades of my life to this place. I never asked to be liberated. Whatever you were hoping to find down here, I advise you to turn around and leave. I have got guards posted with orders to fire on you. That's unfortunate. What's going to happen to Edgewater? Edgewater's dead. Our cannery's dead. Adelaide's deserters are never coming back. Spacer's Choice will shut us down before long. Some of us will die of illness by then. Some will move on. Some will starve. And as for me, I will tender my resignation. Whereupon I shall be processed and then duly imprisoned for gross incompetence. Sorry, dude. Apologies won't give us our lives back. But for what it's worth, I am sorry too. All right, we gotta talk, baby girl. I don't know how you fight, but you keep getting dusted. Too happy to see us. Get this thing and get the hell out. Of course it's sealed. Okay, where are we trying to go? 
Oh yeah, out the city. Okay, calm quiet. Skill points, got ten. Make some trouble at the ship. I used to skip rocks in the river until Constable Reyes ticketed me for unlicensed terraforming. I think she was jealous. She didn't like to get back to the river. Thomas seemed to very seemed very fond of you. He's just interested in fixing stuff. He always used to follow me around, asking me to explain what I was doing. Like a puppy, kinda. Are you sure? He nearly fell over when he saw you. He never told me a word to that effect. And, and since he didn't, I didn't have to say nothing about being... about feeling different. And nothing had to get weird. If he wants to learn about engineering, we should help him get those data pads he wants. I'd like to do that for him. God damn it. It's true, they're crap as... Back in the damn town. All right, we're gonna get those data pads, and then we're gonna get get the hell out. Uh, 
Hey, Miss Parvati. Come for a visit? Not today. Just helping this fella. Adelaide was right to leave. Desertion is a criminal offense, punishable by hard labor. Guessing everything's cool now? We good? I wonder if something happened down at the plant. <laughs> you picked a fine time to visit, stranger. I'm guessing you're the foreman. Foreman Granger, mind those words don't come out of your mouth unless preceded by yes or right away or thank you. I'll let you get back to work. I ain't about that life. What are we supposed to do now? Exercise patience and contemplate the scriptures. Fast travel. Hang on. No, I can't. I know I'm hurt. That's why I'm running. Ah. 
Ah, you got him. And I missed. next time just uh, sneak around people Stairs, don't we? Somehow they got like just bullets sitting inside a uh, bathroom. Rosenberg. Our encoder in the lobby is backed up and running. Hopefully, it won't go on the fritz again and start. But uh,
Okay. Let's get those stems going. Sleeping on a job. Just left. I could have just left, but no. I have to be a nice guy. In this house.
to up here. Today is your lucky day, Thomas. I've got one of your those data pads you wanted. No kidding. Really? Well, which one? Look at that. Building a computing machine out of spectrum potatoes, a primer. I'm just glad it survived all these years. I appreciate you going through all that trouble. In fact, I put aside something special on the off chance that somebody would search out those data pads for me. Hold on, I've got more for you. Well, don't keep me in suspense. I also got part two. Found it in the cannery. Ain't that just ironical. If I'd worked a little longer back at the cannery, I might have found this myself. Two whole data pads? Be still my beating heart. Oh, almost forgot your payment. I want to ask you something. What's on your mind? Never mind. Okay.
Okay, so the third one might be at Pavardi's house. We just gotta find Pavardi's house. Fine, Mr. Thompson. Never been healthier. Get back to the ship. Is this your ship? Oh my star, she is just so handsome! Does she have a name yet? What's her drive model? Oh, gosh. <laughs> Listen to me babbling. When I was in Edgewater, I dreamed of flying on a real ship. Working on a real engine. Belonging to a proper crew. Edgewater won't last another season without power, but... That don't change the fact that I'm indentured to Spacer's Choice. Company expects me back at my post. Never been on a ship before? I've worked on the occasional supply coach in need of repairs. Once I built a little model craft out of spare parts, but Mr. Thompson found out and I had to take it apart. I want to ask you something, and you can say no. But can I come with you? I could tend to your engine. I know my G-valves for my catalyzers, and I can keep your ship singing. And if you ever need a pair of eyes watching your back, I can do that too. What do you think? I'd be glad to have you. I'd be glad to have you along. Pick a cabin. It's yours. Yes! I mean, thanks. You won't regret this, mister. Captain? I can call you Captain now. Ha! <laughs> I got a captain. All right, cool, let's go. What's up, dude? Well, I certainly am looking forward to flying on a ship named the Unreliable. I'll just head upstairs and claim a room. All right, dude, take it easy. Captain. I have detected that the town of Edgewater is now without power. I appreciate you doing your part to hasten their demise. Look at- I have a power regulator. Do you know how to install a power regulator? No.
Can you walk me through it? Step one, pick up your power regulator. Step two, approach the terminal located in our engine room. Step three, insert power regulator. Step four, celebrate. Our engine room is located behind you. Across the cargo bay, up the ladders. I'll be back. Something you need? We'll talk later. Install the power regulator. All systems are operating within acceptable parameters. I am prepared to bring the unreliable into low altitude orbit. This should prove an adequate test of our flight capabilities. Let's get out of here. communication request from Dr. Phineas Wells. Good, I've been waiting right here for him. Aha, there you are. Hale and hearty and captain of your own ship. I see you're putting the unreliable to good use. Shame about her former captain. Horrible way to die. How are you feeling, by the way? I lost track of you in that cave back there. Experiencing any, uh, unnatural drippage? Perfectly normal side effect of thawing. I assure you. Oh, you know, same old same old. Plus, I could slow down time. Oh, that, yes, um, that's probably permanent. I wouldn't worry about it, though. I'm sure you're fine. What you saw in Emerald Vale is happening all across the colony. Food shortages, lack of supplies, and basic necessities. We're dying. The chairman, the minister, and all their lackeys on the board are to blame. The Hope has some of the brightest minds Earth ever sent us. If we can revive the Hope's colonists, they can help us undo the board's mistakes. They can help us set things right. You need to get to Stellar Bay on Monarch. I have contacts there. They'll help me, help us, find the chemicals to revive your fellow colonists. Gladys Kelly, lovely woman, runs a cozy little black marketing outfit on the Groundbreaker. She can get you a nav key to land on Stellar Bay. Why do I need a nav key to land on a planet? Strictly speaking, Monarch is a moon, terraformed badly, and almost completely lawless. You'll love it. Captains don't fly their own ships, you see. Your navigation terminal handles the... Uh, you know, navigation. Think of a nav key as a set of flight instructions. The board's been confiscating nav keys for Stellar Bay, so we must rely on unconventional means of acquisition. Hence, Miss Gladys called Kelly. What's stopping me from just leaving Halcyon altogether? Without a skip drive? Good luck. You'll be dead before you make it to the nearest star. Look, I admire your optimism, but the sad truth is you're stuck here. You, me, and the rest of this colony. We're all skating precariously around the edge of oblivion together. None of us are leaving Halcyon alive, so we may as well make it a better place. And we can start by reviving the hope. About this Gladys person, how do I know I could trust her? 
Gladys and I have been doing business for years. Her smuggling credentials are unimpeachable. If anyone can get you a key to Monarch, it's her. Fine, I'll go. Have a word with Gladys. Excellent. I'll send her a wireless. Let her know you're coming. By the way, I gave Captain Hawthorne a disguise apparatus of my own design. Cutting-edge technology, years ahead of its time. I call it the Holographic Shroud. I'm sure it will prove remarkably useful to you. You'll find it in the Captain's quarters. Thanks. Do you want to explain what a holographic shroud is? Marvelous device. I'm quite proud of myself. The shroud changes the user's appearance to mimic that of another. It has limits. First generation technology, you see. But promising. Exciting to see it in use at last. Very simply, the holographic shroud uses biometric information contained on standard identity cartridges to generate a holographic projection around you. Okay. What's the limitations? Only stands up to a casual scrutiny. Use it too long, bound to flicker, blur, something like that. Movement makes it more likely. Best used in moderation. When you see guards in your path, you can't sneak past, for example. Maintain your distance. Act normal. No running, no jumping. Don't draw their attention. If they pay attention, they're more likely to notice flaws in the hologram. Why do I need a gadget for this? Can I just steal a uniform or something? <laughs> a change of clothes! What is this? Some old spy serial? What inattentive and brainless guard would be fooled by such a shabby disguise? The holographic shroud masks not only your clothes, but your face and fingerprints. It modulates your voice and sweetens your breath. Oh, the uh, hologram sweeten your breath. Science, that's how. Okay. Excellent. I'll contact you once you've found a way to get to Stellar Bay. If you have any questions, come see me in my lab. And remember, don't trust the board. They'll try to win you over with promises of wealth and power, but it's a lie. The board's only interested in filling their own pockets. If we don't put a stop to them, they're going to run this colony to the ground. Transmission ended. If you are ready to depart, please select a destination on your navigation terminal. Got it. Alright guys, that's gonna do it for tonight. I'll see you next time. Peace!